Okay, so now you have an idea how the Firestore works. For that, let's start implementing the code. First, let's go to pub.dev since we need a new package to activate it. So in here, let's type in Firestore and go to this link. As usual, go to installing, then copy this and go back to pubspec.html file and paste it in here. Save your file and wait till it finish. Then go back to the sign up screen. So in the register method, in this method exactly, and below this code, we can initialize it. So in here, we need to type in or write the code to allow the user or to add his user information to the Firestore. For that, let's say Firebase Firestore. It didn't get recognized yet, so I will import it, paste it in here. We say Firestore dot instance dot. Now you have access for the collection and you have access for many other things. So as I explained, you have a collection, then a document, then a collection, then a document, and so on. So same in here. If you want to access it, you need to say dot collection, then access the document for it. So in here, let's say collection and say users. And if there is no collection with this name, for example, it will be created. So no error will occur. And now we can say dot doc, which is the document. And in here, we need to access the ID for each document to get the information of each user. Now to add the information, we can say in here dot set and add the information as a map. The first thing that we need to add for sure is the ID, which is will be a dynamic ID. And we can get it once the user creates this account to save the document with the ID of the user. So let's get the ID now. So in here, let's say final user and let's name it user. It will be equal to the auth dot current user. And now from this user, we can access the UID. So in here, let's say, for example, final UID, it will be equal to the user dot UID, just like this. And with this ID, we can save the document with this ID and save it here. Now we need to save other attributes such as the name, the email and other things. So in here, let's access the full name and we are getting the value from the text field for sure. In here, let's access the email, same email address in here, then the phone number, same as the others in here, phone number, then the image URL of the user. So in here, let's say image URL. And later on, we need to get this URL once the user pick an image. I will implement it in the next tutorials, so stay tuned. And let's add once the user joined or register. So in here, let's say joined add, and we need to provide time for it. So there's many ways to add time for it. For that, I will initialize in here a date. So in here, let's say date and let's initialize it as a file. And let's say date time dot now to get now time. So the exact time. And let's say in here, because we need to parse it. So in here, let's say date parse and it will be equal to the date time dot parse this date. And I still getting an error in here because we need to transform it to a string just like this. Now, this actually contain the milliseconds and the hours and all the information about the registration date. So in here, we can initialize another var. I will name it uh, formatted date 
for example and let's initialize it in here so in here let's access first the day then the month then the year so let's copy this paste it in here paste it in here and paste it in here once i press dot for example you can see that it has all the information you can get the seconds the year and anything that you want first thing that i will add is the date then the month and last thing is the year like this now we could use something else which is called the timestamp and i'll show you how now let's access this formatted date in here like this and let's add another attribute but will be useless it will be useless just because we will access this joint art instead of this created art but you can use both ways it, it is the same actually so in the created art i will initialize something called timestamp which is provided by the firestore and you can access now and you can see now once we register how it would be or how it will look and the firestore so now since i added a new package just got the process and run the application again so let's see what will happen Okay, so during this time, I will talk about the rules and the Cloud Firestore. Now, I changed a few rules. I will go back to it. So, once you go first time to the rules, it will be like this. And this is mean only users that before of this time are allowed to read and write. But in our case, I will allow the user to do it on all cases. Whenever the user joins, he can add uh, read or write from this file store so I change it and publish it just like this now once you change anything this publish in here it will be added and you just need to hit publish in here for sure if you want to to do this for production mode you need to read a lot about rules so not everyone will be or have access to your database if you read this line in here everyone now have access to our database because our security now is quite weak so you need to add advanced rules to it let's go back to the data uh, say this card in here and let's go back to the VS code and in here I got an error for sure you may you may also get this error before that you add this package but i hope not but for that the fix is very easy and this error is so popular our application is getting very big so that's why we get this error so let's go to build.gradle file which is in the app level and in here we need to add a line of code and in the implementation we need to add another line of code actually i prepared them so here's the first one we need to add it in the default config so in here and the second one we need to add it as i said and the dependencies so in here we can add it now i will run the application again and wait and see what will happen okay so the process is now finished and let's log out and i got no error so this has fixed the error i will sign out and let's try to create another account so let's say test in here i will name it i will use this email so test at test.com and password from one to seven and any phone number now actually about the phone number the user can copy paste a string for example if i type in here and use the keyboard he can or i can type in the letters in here so let's fix it now let's go to the phone number and the sign up so in here actually uh, we can add a line of code in here which is 
the input formatters. So in here, let's access the filter text input formatter. And in here, we say dot digits only. If I save it now and I try to add any thing, for example, I'm trying to type any letter in here, it will not be added. Even if I press those, for, for example, or a plus, only digits will be allowed. Let's sign up now and see what will happen. Great, so it seems that it does work actually, um, but it didn't show the other screen. Uh, let's go back to the method. It's because we didn't call navigate.pop in here. Let's go first to Firebase and see what we got here. So it looks good actually. So in here, we created this user collection, then the document ID, which is the user ID. Let's see if it is in here. So I will copy it and search for it. I guess it is getting printed. Yeah, here it is. So the user ID is being added as the document for it. So we can access it later very easily by getting the ID. And all other fields are here. And later on, we can access them easily and fetch them so the user can see them or update them lately. So here's the joint date, as you can see, now the date 25th of May of 2021. And here's the timestamp. Now the timestamp can be read it and you can play with it as much as you want. You can just show, for example, May 25, 2021, and you can show it just like this and transform it to a string. If you want to know about it, you can go to the official documentation, which is a great place to know all about them in here. So in here, actually, let's add navigator dot, oops, navigator dot, let's say, can pop. If this is the case, we need to pop it. So call pop to it. If not, call null. So do nothing, just like this. Now I will restart the application and the main screen will be displayed for sure. Yeah, so here it is. Let's log out and try to register again. Let's say in here test, use test2 as an email for it. Type in a password and a phone number. Say sign up. Here it is and I got no error. Let's check the collection, reload it, and here it is. The email, the ID, it has a different ID for sure, and the Firebase managing this very well. So in the next video, I will implement or allow the user to pick up an image and handle the errors for it. So stay tuned.